Can we go where cars can't or where a ferry or a helicopter is advised? The mission is, can we get to the most remote pub in the UK? My question is, who put a pub here? Getting gnarlier and gnarlier. This is proper remote. This is a proper challenge, even though it's just a day. I mean, I could see why we got warned that this was wasn't to be taken lightly. Still a long way to go, man. To the pub. Our journey starts here in Scotland, home to world record holder, but more importantly, good friend Mark Beaumont. The UK's most remote pub is located in Inverary, a small coastal town in the Scottish Highlands. And thanks to Yolio and Gore, we are headed there for a pint. To get there, we are taking a route we have never seen undertaken by bike, starting at Fort William and traversing through the legendary Noydark Peninsula. At only 75 kilometers, how hard can it be? We set off on the four hour journey up to Fort William, where our adventure would begin. We found a hotel and got some sleep ready for an early start. Chilly start in an early morning, isn't it, Mark? Yeah, I think the early start will pay off, though, mm. because uh, it's a bit of an unknown as to how long this is going to take. Um, so right now, we're by the sea. This is in the Highlands, on the beautiful west coast of Scotland, and this is Loch Eel. We've got the highest mountain in Scotland shrouded in cloud behind us, and the first bit looks pretty straightforward, following the Caledonian Canal, as if we were heading up towards Inverness, but then after about 20k, head off into the rough stuff. And the Noydart Peninsula has quite a reputation. I've never been there before, so... Uh, I think we should get going. Yeah, it's going to be a long day, and that's, I guess, why we've packed a lot on the bikes as well, because we just don't know how long it's going to take us and if we're going to be staying the night. So we've got bivy bag, sleeping bag, etc., etc. But more on that a little bit later, and it's about time we hit the road, the gravel. Let's do it. You got it. This is the start of a good adventure, isn't it, mate? No complaints. We've got a headwind, but uh, it's nothing. It's nothing, honestly. Noydark is legendary in Scotland, so, uh, you know, I can't help that this is uh, lulling us into a false sense of security. It's so utterly beautiful going up the Caledonian Canal. This is not the sort of scenery where you want your bike computer beep, 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 beep at you. So we both turned our notifications off and uh, went the wrong direction. <laughs> so can't blame our wahoos, but uh, they were screaming at us if, they, if we hadn't turned off notifications. But can you blame us? Look at it, absolutely great. This road happens to run out and we're now gonna have to do a U-turn. So um, yeah, there's a, there's a cautionary tale in there somewhere. Beautiful scenery, slightly distracting. We might have gone the wrong way. Uh, what's an adventure like getting lost? <laughs> <laughs>
Well, we're getting on for about halfway in terms of distance, but I don't think we're anywhere close to halfway on time. This is the first bit of tarmac, albeit probably one of the smallest roads you'd find in the, in the UK. So far, we've been treated to gravel along the Catalonian Canal, some amazing single track, which was a bit of a surprise. So really needing bikes that can cover pretty much any terrain. Yeah, now the bikes we're using the Yolio G21s. We've also got their very own, own brand Yolio carbon rims as well. Mark's riding two by, I'm running one by. And then we've got some 45 mil gravel tires. But I'm gonna explain more of the detail of this very bike in a tech video, as well as the clothing we're wearing. We're not wearing our GCN kit. No, Gore have sent out some of theirs. And so we're pretty excited to get wearing it. And uh, also I'm gonna go into the technicalities of that very kit in that video. But for now, I think we're gonna en enjoy some of the nice smooth asphalt. So we're, we're skirting alongside, you can't quite see because of the trees here, Loch Askeg. And, you know, whilst as soon as we left Fort William, we were definitely leaving the last big town, the bit that we're heading into now really is one of the most remote parts of the British Isles. The road literally runs out in about 20 k's time and we'll be on to the, the off-road walking route, really. And uh, if you think out there, there's over 200 islands in the west coast, so we're still very much on the mainland, but you just forget, even without leaving the mainland, how utterly, utterly wild it can get. And, um, you know, I think that's why so few people ever, ever bring their bikes here. We're well into it now. And at some point up here, the car, the, the film crew are gonna have to leave us because there is no road, there is no way to get the car in. So the fact that we can film this, amazing. But from some point up the road here, we're gonna be on our own. And that's where it gets all exciting. Yeah, it's awesome. Look at this view, I mean, freaking paradise. So this, my friend. That's the end of the road. Is where the road ends and the hike begins, or the track. Now it has to be said, we have taken proper precautions because we are going into the wilderness where it gets even more remote than where we've just been. So even pl planning a, a day ride like this, um, we've opted, as you should, to carry kit just in case the weather got gnarly and uh, we ended up a lot later than we planned. So. Out here in Scotland, we've got midi nets. The insects can be bad. Uh, don't think, I don't think they'll be too bad with the, with the wind today. Uh, we've brought a, a little sleeping bag, sleeping roll, and um, just a little tarp. Because, do you know what? If you injured yourself or you had a major mechanical and you were stuck out in the hills there, it's just good to know that you got that backup plan. And there's no phone signal up here, so I'm even carrying a satellite phone and the crew are you going to be able to track us and see where we are. So, you know, it's a ton of fun until things go wrong and all that. So uh, it's, good to, it's good to think ahead. Yeah, and it's not just overnight kit we've got. We've also got plenty of clothing too, just in case we are, like Mark says, just stuck out longer than we would have liked. So this, uh, this road from here is normally a, a hiker's trail. And uh, yeah, there's a couple of big passes before we get to the end of our day. On the map, it doesn't look very far. Let's find out. Let's get it. Oh, this way it gets gnarly, Mark. Mark? Yeah, it's getting gnarly. This is the first big climb, three, three and a half kilometers up. I mean, no complaints so far. We've got the world to ourselves, that's what it feels like.
getting hard now. We're about to resort to walking. First big climb done. Ooh. And now I know why everyone said it's going to take, it could take 10 hours to do 20K. Because that is slow going. But nevertheless, it's good. I love it. So boggy. Look at that. Right. Right, go on, get your foot out. <laughs> oh no! Still a long way to go, man. The route was incredible, taking our bikes over terrain that might be untouched by two wheels. Now with all the epic scenery, it was really easy to forget that the riding needed our full concentration. No broken legs, we're good. We're good. It's getting late into the day now. The time is coming up to seven o'clock. As you can see, the sun's going down behind me. And that is our trail. So it's a proper kind of hiker bike, bike on the shoulder. Jobby, because there's no chance you can ride this. We are conscious that time is getting away from us. We've still got about 13K of this to go. I mean, I can see why we got warned that this was wasn't to be taken lightly because it's tough to bring bikes here. This is proper remote. This is a proper challenge, even though it's just a day. Look at that. Look forward to that beer. It now turned into a battle against the rapidly setting sun. Safely navigating in the dark just wasn't an option, so we had to keep moving. Second to last part. Down there, over that silhouetted mountain, and the pub awaits. It really doesn't look far. It doesn't look far on Wahoo, it doesn't look far in terms of that hill, but given what we've just been over the last two, three hours, I think we're gonna be dark or pretty close to dark before we get there. Right, it's, uh, it's nearly nine o'clock at night and um, it's going to be a beautiful, beautiful sunset just, just over the back of the hill. We're not going to see it from down here, but hopefully get a drone up and capture that. So it's taken us about four hours to do the last 11 kilometers. Often carrying the bike, pushing the bike, bog. I mean, just some of the hardest terrain I've ever taken a gravel bike over. And um, it's about 15K from here. And the prospect of doing that in the dark, even with lights, is uh, it's kind of next level. We knew it'd be gnarly and we did plan for the worst and it just shows you it's, it's unbelievable when you're out here. What an amazing day, but I didn't actually think we'd get stuck out. What's going on, Hank? <laughs> we got pretty gnarly. We're in the bogs. 
but we're cracking on. What's the plan, mate? So the plan is to find some water, find a stream, and find somewhere to camp. What would your, on a serious note, what would your disclaimer be on this route for anyone watching this? I suggest you don't try this with a bike. That would be, that would be the disclaimer. Don't, and don't do this on your own, because it's proper in the middle of nowhere. It's gnarly. So, we have got to 10.30 and uh, we're calling it a night. We, to be honest, I've massively underestimated this journey. I, I was along the road, traveling at 35k an hour with Mark, going, how on earth can it take us nine hours? But let me tell you, the terrain that we've just tried to take our gravel, boat, uh, gravel bikes over has been one of the toughest terrains I think I've ever encountered. It's tough to walk across, let alone take a bike across. So we've, uh, we've kind of got to use our contingency. So we're going to camp here, we buy running water. Um, we're going to cook some food and then at the crack of dawn, we're going to head up the mountain. But let me tell you, this is bite you off more than we can chew, I think. We're kicking, <laughs> we are kicking. And it's, uh, it's a nice mild night. We got food, we got a river, we got a breeze so we can keep the midges away. Life is good. I mean, we couldn't be more in the wild if we tried. Right, alarm for five o'clock. Oh, I love an early morning, Mark. <laughs> I think this one's going to be quite... We've just got a mountain to climb in the morning, that's all. <laughs> that's all we got to do. No, no. no, no. Good morning, good morning. It is five o'clock and uh, time to get up and out. First thing, pack away and walk across the river. <laughs> so we've got about a 6k more of hiking bike before we can get riding again. Luckily, we're all kitted up because it's pretty chilly this morning, so I've got my leg warmers. Transition shorts, the long sleeve, my Gore-Tex jacket, and my Gore-Tex trousers on, just to keep nice and warm. Bike's packed up. The only job we've not done is put on these beauties. <laughs> the first thing that we're going to do is walk across the river. So we're just going to get wet again. But uh, grim, grim, grim. Big mountain climb has started. It's quite a treacherous route. And we've made it to the top. Oh, that was tough. So keep in mind we had a alarm call at five o'clock this morning. That's taken, by the time we uh, packed up camp, two and a half hours to get to this point. And, uh, you know, down, 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 that's good news. But, oh, I mean, I think it's gonna be another absolute epic. Whilst Mark took the sensible option of walking, I was dying to get back on my bike. I've more crashes on this ride than any other ride I've ever been on. Made it down, onto track. Yes, we can now ride to the finish. Thank God. the pub for an early morning pike. How good does that feel? And there's the sea. Woo-hoo! 
Hard, hard, hard fought, hard one. Uh, I genuinely thought it would be a really, really hard route. It was harder than that, and um, we took contingency to stay out because you always should, but you know, it didn't. I just thought, oh, we'll, we'll get over it. We'll get over that hill. Not a chance. Here we are, 10 o'clock in the morning, day two, <laughs> rocking up. No doubt, Peninsula, you have delivered. It's been awesome. And that's in Marais. What a journey. The Old Forge Lodge, or Old Forge Pub, I should say. We are very late for the planned pint. We're very early because it's not open yet. No. Nope. Uh, but well done, buddy. Survived another adventure. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I don't think I've ever worked quite so hard for such a short bike ride. If you look on a map, we've not gone very far. But from the canal riding up, following the, the lock, and then, of course, the epic double pass over the top. I mean, that is a walker's route. Let me remind you, yeah. a walker's route. We know that now. It's definitely not a cyclist route. <laughs> um, massive thank you to Yolio for supplying us with their gravel bikes. Make sure you go and check out the, the tech video and so you can see an in-depth look at the bikes. And also, a massive thank you to Gore as well for kicking us out in this epic gear. We needed it more than we thought we would because yes. we ended up sleeping out in the wild. Yeah, exactly that. Let us know in the comment section below if you enjoyed this video and if you want to see more of Mark and myself. And also, give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Right, we need to shoot because uh, we need to get a ferry. We do. <laughs> <laughs> see you later.